ัพย์แล้วก็มีดรรัชภูมินี่แหละมาช่วยกันทำในเฟสแรกแต่เดี๋ยวก็ใกลจะขยายมอชอกับนาเลสวนเนี่ยก็แสดงความจำนงที่จะเข้ามาร่วมนะครับคราวนี้ก็มีผมนะคนไทยที่ทำงานต่างประเทศแต่ยังมีหัวใจไทยอยู่ก็ acting เป็น overseas researcher ไปก่อนแต่ก็ไนไทยก็ไนเซชั่นตอนนี้เนี่ยสกวให้ทุนปอเอกเรานะครับเพื่อมาพัฒนาองค์ความรู้ทางด้านนี้ท่านศาสตราจารย์เลศให้เลยแต่เรายังมีปัญหาเรื่องการรีคูดเด็กอยู่เพราะฉะนั้นในอนาคตเนี่ยอาจจะมีกรมทางหลวงกรมทางหลวงชนบทอะไรเข้ามาคือผมดูแล้วนักวิชาการทำก่อนนะ่ะมันไม่มีใครว่านะครับทำก่อนแล้วโชว์ผลออกมาแล้วมันจะทิศทางมันจะชัดขึ้นใน,ในอนาคตโอเวอร์ซีตอนนี้ยังยังกำลังหาอยู่นะครับคราวนี้ Purpose m o d e เราเนี่ยเราเวิร์กภายใต้สกวตัวเนี้ยนะครับโดยมีกระทรวงต่างประเทศเนี่ยเป็นเมนทอร์เป็นเมนทอร์ให้ก็คือทางโกลเมเชียและแปซิฟิกใต้เนี่ยนะครับแต่เรายังหาผู้ร่วมโคลาบอเรเตอร์อยู่นะครับก็คือเราก็มองไปที่การทางทางหลวงกรมทางหลวงบางทีก็จะเชิญปตทมาร่วมมั่งแต่ปูนนี่เรายังไม่เคยแอปโปรชนะครับแต่เราหวังไว้หวังไว้เพราะเขาขายซีเมนต์ได้จากการเซวิไลท์อันนี้จันบุญชัยสรุปภาพโอเวอร์วิวของพวกเพฟเมนต์รีเสิร์ชที่เราทำเนี่ยเราแบ่งงานออกเป็น4ด้านนะครับมีเพฟเมนต์แมネจเมนต์ไอเรื่องโครงสร้างถนนไก่คอนสตรักชันแอนด์แมネจเมนต์แล้วก็เพฟเมนต์แมทเทียลผมกับจันบุญชัยเนี่ยมีแอเรียลเอ็กซ์เพรสติสเนี่ยใกล้เคียงกันเราก็มองเรื่องสตรัคเจอร์ดีไซน์กับพวกเพฟเมนต์แมทเทียลไอตรงนี้เราก็เชิญทีมอาจารย์วิศนุมาช่วยดูนะครับเรื่อง pavement management แต่คันนี้เรื่อง construction เนี่ยในเมืองนอกเนี่ยมันจะโดน drive จากพวกผู้รับเหมาเข้ามาเขามีปัญหาเขาวิ่งมาหาละมาหาอะไรเขาบอกว่าอาจารย์ช่วยแก้นิดนิดนึงแต่ว่าบ้านเราเนี่ยมันมันอาจจะอีกไกลกว่าที่จะไปถึงตรงนั้นเราก็จะเริ่มก่อนอาจจะมองปัญหาให้ก่อนนะครับคันนี้ก็จะผ่านไปเร็วๆเรื่องเรื่องพวกนี้คันนี้ไอไอตรงเนี้ย Q&A เนี่ยไม่มีนะครับเดี๋ยวผมก็จะขอจบเซสชันตรงนี้แล้วเดี๋ยวจะให้ Justin เนี่ยขึ้นมาพูดงานเขาเลยเพราะว่าเพราะว่าที่ผมมองตอนนี้นะครับความสำคัญของจัสตินเนี่ยที่เขาพูดเรื่อง Asset Management เนี่ยการจัดการเนี่ย Asset เนี่ยมันเกี่ยวข้องกับข้อมูลออสเตรเลียใช่มี Population ที่มันมันไม่60กว่าล้านคนแบบบ้านเราเนี่ยการจัดการ Asset ข้อมูลต้องเนียบมากนะครับถึงจะจัดการได้อย่างที่กรมทางพูดอะ่ะแค่หลักกิโลเงี้ยเขามีเท่าไหร่แล้วเขาจัดการกันยังไงอะไรพวกนี้มันเป็นปัญหาที่ Challenge หมดแล้วที่ผมเชิญจัสตินมาเนี่ยคือจัสตินเป็นคนที่ทำรีเสิร์ชทางด้านสกิดรีสิสแตนนะครับก็คือเรื่องไอ้แรงเสียดทานระหว่างผิวทางกับกับยางเนี่ยคือคือเรายังไม่มองกันในโลกเนี้ยออกแบบถนนอย่างที่เพิ่งคุยกับพอสอสมัยเนี่ยครับเราจะซ่อมถนนเมื่อมันพังแต่ยังไม่มีใครคิดเรื่องซ่อมถนนเมื่อมันไม่ปลอดภัยนะครับยังไม่มีใครพูดทฤษฎีเนี่ยในโลกเนี้ยก็คือว่าบางทีเนี่ยแคลกมันเกิด7ปีเราทุกปี7 8ปีเราซ่อมดีแต่ถ้าเอาความปลอดภัยไปจับเนี่ยอาจจะแค่5ปีนะครับปี6เนี่ยขับไม่เซฟแล้วนะความเร็วเดิมอย่างพอกับพอสอสมัยว่าถ้าพูบได้เนี่ยปี6ต้องเอาป้ายจำกัดความเร็วไปตั้งว่าปี6เนี่ยขับเกินร้อยไม่ได้แล้วนะเส้นเนี้ยต้อง80เนี่ยครับพวกนี้เราต้องทำงานวิจัยรองรับหมดซึ่งซึ่งเดี๋ยวจัสตินจะขึ้นมาพูดนะครับโอเคผมก็ขอจบเซสชันผมตรงนี้เดี๋ยวมีอะไรคุยกันได้ตอนตอนรับประทานอาหารหรือว่าเซสชันช่วงบ่ายนะครับแต่ว่าอย่าลืมนะครับเจสตินคุยเนี่ยอาจจะมี2ช่วงเดี๋ยวเขาคุยช่วงหนึ่งแล้วเราเบรกเช้าแล้วเขากลับมาคุยต่อเสร็จแล้วเราก็เบรกลันช์พอลันช์เสร็จเนี่ยก็ยังเป็นเซสชันของเจสตินอยู่แต่จะเป็น Q&A ก็คือมีคําถามถามเจสตินเนี่ยหลังเบรกหลังเบรกเที่ยงนะครับหลังกินข้าวเที่ยงก็จะเป็น2ภาษาเดี๋ยวผมกับอาจารย์บุญชัยจะช่วยช่วยแปลให้ถ้าถ้ายังไงก็จะอีกสักชั่วโมงหนึ่งแต่หลังจากเบรกบ่ายแล้วเราก็จะเป็นเสวนาภาษาไทยนะครับถามได้ทุกเรื่องก็จะให้จัสตินเข้าไปพักก็คือพยายามจะจัดให้มันแมชกับเรื่องภาษาอะไรด้วยเดี๋ยวถามแล้วแปลถามแล้วแปลมันมันจะน่าเบื่อโอเคนะครับผมก็จบขอจบเซสชันผมตรงนี้นะครับขอขอเวลคัมจัสตินออนออนสเตจ it's your time okay it's your turn justin good morning ever
I have been once a couple of years ago, uh, just crossing the university, and I have taken photograph. I didn't know anybody here at that time. Uh, very good university, and also I would like to thank uh, inviting me to come and give this presentation and share my knowledge with you. Uh, and um, I would like to congratulate the organization committee uh, hosting this kind of uh, workshops, uh, which is very good uh, uh, for the both parties, university as well as for the industry people, which I am coming from. I am not from the university. I, I work for the uh, road industry as a professional engineer and a manager. So my presentation is mostly I'm talking about asset management and also about skid resistance. Uh, and also I'm just focusing a little bit uh, about what we have been doing uh, type of research work in these two subjects. And also I'll give you a little bit uh, insight into the collaboration and partnership, which I am very interested uh, in my career because last uh, five, six years actually, I've been working with the universities and the research institution um, uh, very well and we have achieved a lot. So I would like to take the opportunity to tell you that uh, collaboration and partnerships are the most important thing in this any industry, especially universities and the industry both have a skills uh, if you combine both together i think it, it's it must be a much better opportunities you can have uh, especially i would like to tell about road authorities uh, road authorities engineers are very busy with the day-to-day -day work uh, that's my experience uh, most of the engineers doesn't have any time to do any research work uh, I'm quite sure Thailand knows the same situation, right? And uh, the, at the same time, universities are looking for research work. They are trying to help. But in Australian situation, the universities are struggling to attract some funding for the research. So if you combine these two organizations and with the industry, I think you can achieve a lot. That's my experience for the last seven, eight years. So my presentation based on such experience. Here what we are talking is uh, uh, several organization, I think tops touch in his presentation. Uh, you are having uh, international uh, collaboration, international uh, uh, partnerships, international uh, experts coming together. I just wanted to tell you know, my experience in this one, the partnerships are central and essential to TMR. TMR is uh, transport and main roads where I worked. So this is my organization in Australia. If really fulfilling the needs of multi-sectorial, multifunctional approach to address increasing complex challenges in the management of payments. Can you see the word, word called complex? Complex challenges. Road authorities have a complex challenges. Social is demanding certain services from the road authority. If you don't provide that one, it's a failure of road authority. So these are very complex. Each and every person is looking for some advantage. And uh, you have a lot of challenges within your organizations as well. So collaboration and partnerships are very good answers for these kind of challenges. And uh, partnerships are required to link research, innovation, adaptation, delivery system to bring critical technology breakthroughs. This is what uh, another main thing, you know, researchers are in the universities having a PhD courses, master degree courses, they do very well. But unless you have a partnership with the road authority, you cannot implement those ones. At the same time, researchers want real data from road authorities. Road authorities have the data, but they don't have people to analyze that. So if you partnership with the university, university graduates, university professors are there, so many academics are there, they are very skillful for analysis or new technologies. For my experiences as a road engineer, we are very happy with the Excel spreadsheet or something like that. 
If you present something uh, uh, with the Excel graph, I think we are quite happy. But if you go and look at it, uh, what is the real world happening with the researchers? Researchers have new technologies called probabilistic methods, deterministic models, uh, data mining models, all kind of things have already established in the world, but we are not using at all. So that's what, the reason is not because of incompetency of engineers. Engineers doesn't have a time. You, you go and do the construction, do your maintenance, but we have the time for the maintenance. I'm quite sure you all agree with me. The road authorities, I have been working in the various countries. Whichever country you go, the same story. I've been in Sri Lanka recently doing consultants. I was in India and China and Singapore and various countries I've been doing consultancy work. Similar stories. Uh, my experience is in Australia for last seven, eight years, you get real return if you have a partnership with the researchers. Innovative adaptation delivery system can be improved. The third point, partnerships are also needed sharing experience, insight and good practices to improve programs impact. So sometimes uh, the researchers have their own stories, road engineers have their own stories, but we are not sharing each other. So how can you help each other to improve the system? So this kind of forums, now you have academics and the road authority people, all are working together, asking questions from each other, then you are learning from that. So that's another good one. And also the last one is a uh, lot of this work need to be funded. Funding is everywhere worldwide issue. Road authorities have funds, but they don't have research and development funds. Universities have funds, but they don't have research and development funds sufficient to continue their researches. So, but if you are committed by the road authority person, so you can take percentage of your budget and pass it to researchers and start doing research work. That's what the top, some of the slides mentioned, you know. You have to share the resources, you have to share the funding as well. Without funding, nothing could happen. So that's the first note I want to do before I go to the other areas. Then I'm touching about the objectives of a road authority. I think because road authority people are here, I think what I want to bring it, bring it forward is wherever you live in the world, Australia or US or third world country or Thailand or India or Sri Lanka, the objective is mostly common to everyone. For example, safety. Safety is the number one issue for the public. The engineers, they are very keen to have a structurally sound road, but public doesn't understand about that one. What is structurally sound? So I'll give a little bit examples from Australia and Thailand as well. So this is the New South Wales, Australia. One is uh, travel. Travel people from place to place in a safe, efficient and reliable movements. I think everybody agrees with this one. This is what we are there. So the road network has to be safe and efficiently operate and it has to be reliable without any damage or anything so people can freely move one place to another place. Asset, transport infrastructure meets acceptable standards. Can you have a very damaged surface? The road authority will get a lot of criticism from the public. If you have a potholes, if you have a damaged road surfaces, so you have to have a, some kind of standard to be maintained. This is one of the main objectives on the road authority. I think any road authority is seen. And the access, access to the community and economy. Economy in the sense that uh, heavy vehicles are running on our road networks. Heavy vehicles are running because of the economy driven industry. So we are catering to not only the public transport, we are tra providing uh, uh, support to the industries as well. So these are the things. Safety, again I put it another highlighted point, safety. Safety and security transport system is maximized. It cannot be stopped because accidents or crashes could happen because there are various factors in that one, but 
what we are trying to do is with the budget available, we are trying to maximize the safety aspects on the transport system. Then a lot of people forget about environment. I don't know about Thailand. Anybody wants to talk about th environment? How you are reacting to environment? What your activities? So environment protection is important for us as engineers or academics, everyone has to think about whatever your activities, how that damage to the environment. So this is very important. Some of the countries doesn't have any commitment, but this is the future. The future is you have to think about environment, what is the damage occurring to uh, your environment. Then, uh, sorry. I put another one. This is belongs to my organization, Department of Transport and Main Roads, Queensland. Again, it says plan an integrated, reliable, and cost-effective transport system. Integrated, reliable, cost-effective, similar objectives. Then the transport infrastructure support economic growth and provides access to service for the community. Again, what we are supporting is our road networks, is the community as well as to the industries for the economy in the country. Without roads, economy will go down straight away. There's no economic development unless you have roads. So in the villages, you can develop certain things, you know, community-based products. If you don't transport to the cities, what will happen? There's no economic gain for them. So rural community and the urban community as well, and also international transport. So roads to the ports, roads to the airports, all kind of things are very important for the economic development, especially in Thailand, tourism. If you don't have good roads, I don't think a tourist will come here to explore all the places where you go in Thailand. Thailand, everywhere you can go and enjoy. Without roads, what can we do? So you have to think about these are the objectives on that. Uh, and again, safety. Manage the transport system to improve safety, usability, and customer service. Uh, there's a, another special one. It's called customer service. We all should understand that we are catering for some customers. Customers, clients, those who are using our roads. So unless we satisfy them, what's the point of having the roads? So we are responsible, as a professionals, we are responsible to create a good road network to satisfy our customers, that is road users. So that's uh, one of the important thing I want to highlight, which is not spelled out at the previous slide. And ensure sustainable and capable workforce. This is another issue. It's a capacity building and also keeping the staff with you. Most of the engineers I know that I started as a, just a site engineer. You promote to another level and promote to director level ultimately, but you forget what you have been doing. So you have to fill up those gaps. Otherwise, if you don't have a people, so again, it will be an issue. So you have to think about that one as well. See, Department of Rural Roads, Thailand, what is the vision? Develop a value raise, complete road network, sufficiently sustainably for public interest. So similar interest you have. It's a public interest and a sustainability, it's good and sufficiently. I think I, I had a morning chat with you all and uh, there are certain networks to be completed in rural networks. I think that could be the reason why it says networks. And a mission, develop and improve rural road standards, support transportation, tourism, broader, borderland development and as well as integrated and sustainable city development. Again, very similar to the Australian objectives. So very simple. You are promoting tourism, you are promoting support of transportation. Uh, next one, reliable, reliable traffic problem by connecting missing links, construction, and that's a rural road uh, department only that problem is uh, at the moment, but not to the highways uh, at the moment. Mentor for local government, developing local roads, organization correlative to the Thai bureaucratic ad advancement strategy. This is another professional advice. But very similar, 
all this Australian or wherever you go, very similar objectives.